My name's Captain Art Sapp of Native Sun Sport Fishing Charters. I'm a Shimano Pro, and we specialize in charter fishing with live baits under kites here in South Florida and tournament fishing. We fish right at 200 days a year, but it's exciting on every trip. I mean, you meet great people and you get to show them things that they wouldn't get to see otherwise. Good morning, everybody. Captain Art Sapp here. It's a special time of year here in South Florida. We've got, we're kind of transitioning into the kite fishing deal, but at the same time, we get a showering ballyhoo situation where the sails and the mahi will push inshore all the way inside the reefs, almost to the beach, chasing these ballyhoo. So we're prepared with our Therese Blue Water BFC spinning rods with the Saragossa BFC spinning reel. So the cool thing for the kite application this time of year where we're just transitioning in for the sails, and obviously we catch some ahis and tunas and kings and all kinds of stuff doing that as well. We've got our BFC Blue Water Series Therese rods with the BFC reels. We'll be using them in the, in the kite application, which we've got just enough wind. We just had a cold front come through. We got a little bit of wind off the north, which is ideal here in late October. I expect to see some sails on the kites today. In years past, we always used the copper, but we just ran the hook through the bottom jaw and then wrapped the copper back up itself and up the bill a little bit. We found since they produce these ringer swivels and easy swivels that putting that copper on there and putting it in front gives our hookup ratio, it bumps it up quite a bit. So we've gotten to we're doing this and it casts real well too and isn't prone to fly off there on you. So we went away from that mono and have started fishing 30 pound Power Pro recently. And we've been really, really pleased. One of the major issues is having to constantly reline. Well, we're a month in with this Power Pro and we're not seeing any negative effects from it at all yet. So I'm thinking we're gonna save a pile of money and not relining every month and potentially catch fish that we hadn't been catching in the past when our line starts to get tired. So we've got our flat line out. I like to get it in the water and get away from it a little ways. And then we're gonna put the sea anchor in the water. We really only do this when we're charter fishing. So the sea anchor is going in the water to control our drift. And, and put our bow into the sea. Generally, it fishes best when it's real bumpy. Obviously, it's not at all bumpy today, but it'll still do a very good job for us. And it slows us down. We ride more with the current, the water movement, than, than, than the wind when we're doing it this way. The sea anchor itself, they call it a 20-footer. It purses out into about 35 feet or so, into a big parachute, basically, underwater. All right, well, we got a ballyhoo in the water now. We're gonna get a, um, a thread fin herring here. I'm gonna go ahead and bridle one up, get that in the water. We had a handful of bites on them yesterday, so we wanna continue to have a few of those in the water here today while we're getting set up. I like to nose bridle these fish here. I feel they perform a little bit better, and if we need to pull on them, it doesn't, they don't struggle while being pulled on. It allows that circle hook to sit freely in, in the bait too, so we do get a bite, it won't double back on the bait fish on us. Our next step will be getting the kites in the air. Now, we've got right at eight knots of wind, so we could get the kites up without any assistance. But the issue is, wind off the north, these fish kind of feed into the little bit of current we've got, which is going north. We're gonna get bit and they're gonna go south. And when we go to moving on them, we're gonna steal all the wind away from the kites. They're gonna fall in the water and become a giant disaster. We wanna avoid that. So today, with this little bit of wind, we're gonna go ahead and put some helium to assist the kites. We've got two split shot leads on the left-hand side of the kite to start it leaning over, and the helium is, balloon is tied on the right-hand spar of the kite. And that gets the thing to lay over nicely. We push our, our bridle all the way in as close to the kite as we can. It makes it fly, fly square and lower to the water and catches as much wind as possible to really get it to pull out to the side, get as big a spread as we can. The idea is we're covering a ton of water with all our terminal tackle up out of the water. We fish electric reels on the kite rods when we're doing this because it allows you to continue doing other things while it's on its way down. And inevitably you're in a rush. You just had a bite, a bait went away. We want to get it down and right back up again quickly. And the Beastmaster's got plenty of speed and power, no matter how hard the wind's blowing, to rip that thing down and, and get us back up and fishing again. So our first kite's fully deployed. We've got a, a pretty good sized blue runner on the long bait, a, a medium or so goggle eye in the middle and a herring in the short. We've got a little bit of weight assisting to keep those baits in the water on the long and in the middle and then the short bait has no weight at all. 
the idea is to have a little bit of blouse in the line, a little bit of a, a, a swoop there. That way when the fish jumps on the bait, there's a little bit of give right away and then we want to have the gear, the reel out of gear as quickly as possible. The, the saying is if you beat the fish to the bait, you should catch every one of them. So the reason we leaned that kite to the left like we did was so that we could lean another kite to the right and cover a larger area. And that will be our next step. We've already got our second Beastmaster out, getting ready to get plugged in. When you're setting up your kite setup, spacing is, it, it's, it's custom as to how you want to do it. The further you space it, the harder it is to do. It's harder to see, it's harder to tend your bait out there on the long. It's also harder to hook fish the further they are away. So we've been doing this quite a while and we like to try to cover as much water as possible. So our spacing's pretty big. Like I said, it's 150 feet from first clip to kite and it's gonna be 90 feet between first clip, second clip, and 90 feet again between second clip, third clip. If the fishing's really, really slow, we might space it out even bigger. And if it's a really, really fast, hot scenario, I might tighten them up a little bit. When we're fishing these circle hooks, when we're sail fishing, or really just kite fishing this time of year, we bridle all our baits. These are just, uh, those like silicone hair rubber bands is all we use, these tiny little bands. But they're really, really strong and they do a phenomenal job for us. Somebody started making these little titanium needles, rigging needles, little bridling needles, and they've, they've worked real well for us. Otherwise, you use uh, mortician needles and we'll grind them out to where you got an open gap where you can do it. And, and there's also some stainless needles that are made specifically for this, but we found our custom needles to be a little better. So we're doing something right now that we don't really do very often. We're going to fish a ballyhoo in the kite here. And we're going to fish it on a short bait because like I said earlier, they are quite light. We're kind of specific as to which bait and, and the reason we choose each bait in each section of the kite has a lot to do with their weight. A heavier bait obviously stays in the water a lot better on those long ba baits than, it, than a, a light bait would. Like that ballyhoo would struggle. That hampers your presentation. It gets to swinging around and yanking that bait too much. So. We'll fish our lighter baits close and progressively bigger baits as you get out in the spread. And we're going to fish our reels as light as possible, as far out of gear. And again, the BFC does that better than any other reel in the market. Just engaged here, we've got half a pound of drag, and that's usually just enough, unless the wind's blowing real hard, to keep everything from just dumping off in the water. The goal is to keep all as much of the terminal tackle out of the water as possible. Right now, if you look out across there, you can see the floats are about 14 feet in the air. So all we've got is a foot of 30 pound fluorocarbon, that 6-0 circle hook, and the bait. But if we get denied in that situation, then that fish just was never meant to be caught because he's not seeing much of our gear to deter him. The reason the drag is so successful at kite fishing is due to its smoothness and its consistency through the drag range. As you ease that drag lever forward, it's only adding a half a pound per click and it just, it's smooth all the way through it. And you find exactly where you need to be, depending on the size and how hard your bait's pulling on the way out and how hard the wind's blowing. It, you can find where you need to be through that smooth drag swing. It's not engaged and instantly you're at five, six, seven pounds. It's, it's so smooth and so gradual through the swing. You don't have to worry about somebody ramming the thing in gear and yanking a hook out of a fish or, or locking your reel down and parting a fish off. It's not gonna happen with these Shimano BFC reels. They're designed specifically to do this game and they were successful. They built a phenomenal reel here. We're kite fishing now, but we don't only focus on doing this. We use these reels for all different, um, we cover all different angles of, of fishing with them. We troll with them for um, white marlin, blue marlin. Typically um, a bigger blue, it becomes a tussle for a while on the, what, what we call dink gear. When you get one that's 300 that eats on one of these, it's. It gets long and drawn out. Um, we prefer to try to get this out of the way and get one of our pitches, which are typically our Talca 25 or one of our larger um, Talca 50s or our Tiagras that we're, that we're putting in front of one of those big 500 pound class fish. But these on a 150, 200 pound blue, what I personally find is you don't pull on them quite as hard and they stay up top and jump around more. They don't tend to want to sound and, and bulldog on you. So I prefer to catch one on this gear rather than that big, heavy, cumbersome gear, just because it's comfortable in hand, I prefer to fight them in stand-up um, and and doing it that way rather than some of these guys, they're fighting them from a chair and stuff. Um, and not that that isn't a good way of doing it, but it's just my preference being that we fight, we fish from a center console. 
you know, we're of the belief that if we see a fish, then we have a very good chance of getting it to bite. So if we see one up top tailing or we see one that is free jumping or just bait being pushed, we try to get the boat in that vicinity of where that action was happening because you know, more often than not, you're gonna get a bite out of that. All right, so sitting here in a total doldrum, can't get a bite and two sails pop up 25 feet off the side of the boat. We just looked like they were up and cutting in flyers. So we drove the kite baits over. There he is, he's on the right short now. Wham, just took a swipe. And there's the benefit of that seven foot rod working around behind the motors there. This uh, lighter action rod here that we're fishing on the short there, it absorbs those head swats really well for us. See that, that rod, that fish is going bananas out there. He's not very happy about his situation right now. It, this, this is the, the lighter action of the two. I believe it's the 12 to 20. All right, if you wanna go after him, I can get him, he's up top. We can get a quick release and show him how we do it on tournament day. We're rolling. So Art's gonna come up and this is the beauty of these reels. You just keep on cranking and keep a steady bend in this rod as fast as you can wind. So this is what we do on tournament day. And there's your release. What we just showed you right there is the ability of that reel to keep up with us when we're moving fast on a fish. It's, it's a, it really is a time game for us. You know, the longer it takes you to catch one, the less time you've got bait presenting properly in the right place. So when Jimmy can keep up with me going nine knots chasing on a fish like that, we get it done. If we had the fish released in less than a minute, and we get right back to fishing again. Plus, the less time you're fighting a fish, the less likely something bad's gonna happen. The action on these rods, I, I personally like a lot. I mean, it's got that soft tip that was, you know, pointed out earlier, but the fulcrum through the rod, it carries into the grip. I mean, I could feel it all the way into my hand, which tells me that this rod has plenty of power if you need to put a lot of heat on something. One of my favorite features on this rod is, is the butt, the way that they machined it, where it's rounded. It's very comfortable while fighting a fish. Most of these light tackle butts, they're a little bit, they dig in a little bit. This one does not. There he is. The fish is kind of calm right now, right here, probably 35 feet under the bow. But it would not be uncommon for him to streak fast across the bow to the right. And the length of that rod allows us to get around the bow of the boat very easily. And, you know, it's not really something you got to worry about on the sport boats, but here on these center consoles with the 360 degree fishability, it's something you got to think about. And that makes these rods very, very, very advantageous for us. So on our conventional setup, our kite fishing conventional setup that actually fishes out, for, out under the kites, we fish the Talica 20 BFC, specifically set up for bill fishing. The, the, the engineers really hit it on this one with their very specific drag curve. It's so smooth, it makes what we do very, very easy. Total drag capacity on this reel is 15 pounds. Ideal. Again, we're fishing a very, very light wired circle hook, the Billfish non-offset. We actually step it up to a 6.0. We snelled these hooks. 30 pound fluorocarbon. It's the same pink 30 pound fluorocarbon that we use on our, on our flat rods. You could potentially get away with a little bit heavier being that so much of the tackle is out of the water, but I like consistency. So we're staying with the pink 30 pound fluorocarbon. 15 feet, same as the spinning rods, as that's IGFA. Now, the release clips out in the kite are basically the same as an outrigger clip, but the angle's a little different when you're kite fishing. It's a little bit more harsh than it is when you're trolling. So we add a stainless ring. It just makes it to where the line's rubbing on a nice smooth surface and the angle is good in the kite release clip. The bobber, or what we call a kite marker, if you're looking to try to find your bait in a, in a rough, windy ocean, that thing gives you a good chance of seeing it. We add a little bit of weight for our middles and longs. We try not to fish any weight on the shorts, if at all possible. I like to fish this little surf fishing bead to keep that lead from banging on the knot that sits right above our ball bearing snap swivel. Loop knot and 
We're on to our fishing rod. Terra's BFC series of rods are paired with a Winthrop Epic butt, which we love dearly. And it comes in two options in the seven foot rod, the seven foot series. The 1220 is a considerably softer tip. That's 12 to 20 pound mono is what it's rated for. So we'll fish that 16 to 30 pound outfit on the or rod on the longs and the 1220s on the shorts. Middles can go either way. Shimano Terra's BFC series of rods has a very high end custom look and feel. We're a high end custom expensive charter and I want my equipment to match. The BFC series certainly does that for us. All right, we're working downwind now, so it should, here we go, yep, got one on top right here. It's gonna be port bow. One o'clock. There we go, we got, might have a bite here, guys. Hey, right, Tim, sail. A lot of bird activity going on and there's a fish cutting right on our bow right now too. Some others up in this area. That's where we started off first thing this morning and moved up to the north, but it's starting to pop off here now. How smooth the drag is when the fish burns it off and then when they change directions, the retrieve is, is great. You just, you don't have a problem keeping up with them. This one is angry. Yeah, the rod's really light and comfortable in hand as well. You know, it's it's not a not where you feel like you have to be two hands on it. You're just one hand and the other hand just focusing on reeling. So in this scenario right now too, while we're moving on a fish, that's the great thing about these reels, they're really fast. You just, just literally keep the rod in a, a steady bend and turn the handle. You don't worry about that hook shifting around in the fish's mouth at all. You don't worry about that fish. If it does make a, an, a different maneuver, you can always gain on them. You know, I'm not a big fan of pumping and winding as we're moving on them. I would prefer to just turn the handle and keep a steady bend in the rod and keep steady pressure on them. releasing this fish here he's right here boat side kind of getting a clean release here get this hook out this fish has obviously had some experience got a broke bill hooks Make out sure it's good hooks out well a lot of times you'll feel them biting back down on your hand this fish has got plenty of spunk right now it's time all right so let's talk about our spinning rod setup on the spinning rods, we got a 5.0 non-offset billfish circle hook. Currently, we're tying just a traditional five-turn fisherman's knot, 30-pound fluorocarbon. And talking about earlier how casting these ballyhoo and and we started trying to fish this braid for for that purpose, a lighter bait and easy to cast with this braid. It's a uh, it's 30-pound Power Pro. So far in our testing with the braid, everything's a positive. We, we've liked it a lot. It's the line capacity is phenomenal. Hookup ratio has been really really good for us. You know, we're only a month or so into fishing it, but the, the line has held up extremely well. In the winter, we'll fish 50, 60 days in a row, and it gets really, really difficult keeping up with your mono, because after 10 or 15 trips and a lot of bites, that mono gets exhausted, it gets tired, and, and it increases the likelihood of you losing fish to it. The Power Pro, we have not had that issue at all. So we, we tie what we call an, an improved Albright, and it's held up extremely well, very strong. It's a small knot when you're casting it, you barely even hear it go through the guides. Our choice in the spinning rods is a Therese Blue Water BFC. The action on the rod is perfect for a circle hook fishery. It's really soft at the tip, and then once you've loaded in, you've got a ton of backbone for the rest of the rod. Eight feet long, so we can really wing a bait far if we need to, and sometimes when the fish get a little spooky when the water's really clear, We've got to be able to wing it a good ways to keep them spooking them and still get them to feed. And that eight foot rod really helps us with that. When you're fighting a fish, it can get pretty erratic. Well, that soft tip takes up a lot of that shock. It's a really good shock absorber in a fight like that. So our choice in spinning reel for this is pretty specific. We, we chase all our fish, and especially in the tournaments. And obviously the boat's capable of pretty good speed. We need our anglers to be able to keep up with them. That 56 inches of retrieval per revolution of the reel handle is phenomenal for us. I don't have to worry about my anglers getting exhausted, turning that handle, trying to keep up with me when I'm moving on a fish. 
it's never an issue. Line capacity also is also very, very important. And with the braid, obviously we can stack a ton of braid on this thing. We're only fishing that 30 pound power pro. We can stack so much on here. I don't ever worry about line capacity. Saragossa BFC is our reel of choice. I talk about the drags in the conventional BFC reel. They did the same thing here. A traditional Saragossa is designed for a lot more drag than the BFC is. We don't fish a ton of drag. We got these light wire circle hooks. Max drag capacity on this reel is 26 pounds. Now we'll never touch that. We seldom get over eight pounds, but it's so smooth in its application from zero drag up to that seven pounds that I don't worry about getting a catchy or a snatchy drag. This thing is, is designed for what we do and it, it really does do a phenomenal job for us. As per Shimano's recommendation after a day's fishing, we strictly use cool, fresh water, run through a spot zero, so reverse osmosis water. When we're cleaning these things off, good rinsing, not too much pressure as to not drive any salt or anything into the reel. It's very important not to use harsh soaps or degreasers on these reels as you're, you're driving that down into the grease or inside the reel and you're very likely to hurt the bearings and you know, the actual functionality of the reel as well as tarnish the finish on the reel. Good throw rinsing, and then break out the chamois and dry them down. With that, you'll never battle any corrosion issues, and you'll reduce your maintenance needs greatly. So what's just as important as cleaning them and rinsing them properly at the end of the day is storing them in a cool, dry atmosphere. Don't store them in the boat, and don't store them on the dock box, or at least don't store them in the center console. If you got air conditioning, you're good. Take care of these things, and they'll take care of you. So this was episode two in a three-part series, really detailing how we use these BFC series of rods and reels out here on the water, targeting sailfish and really anything else that might want to bite that we get to play with. Thanks a bunch for watching, guys. Stay tuned to Shimano's North America Fishing YouTube channel for comprehensive videos on high-speed wahoo fishing, tuna fishing, and sword fishing utilizing Shimano's Blue Water series of rods. Mm -hmm.